One question I get a lot is, which is the best programming language for chemical engineers? So let's check them out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And yes, which is the best or the better programming languages out there for chemical engineers? As you can imagine, or probably already know, there are a lot of programming languages with different advantages and disadvantages, of course. Depending on your engineering applications, you may find that certain type of software will be great for you and other will be, well, maybe weak for those applications. And of course, guys, we will be focusing our attention mostly into chemical and process engineering roles or applications. Some real life engineering applications may be data analysis, databases, modeling, design of unit operations, such as tanks, reactors, maybe even typing systems, or simply any program or application that you want to build for field engineers or maybe operators. But don't get discouraged, guys. The important part right here to remember is that the important thing is, of course, to try to develop that logical reasoning so you can apply it whenever changing to another programming language. So now let's go to the list. I tried to focus my attention into the three most important types of programming languages that you will encounter. But important to consider that it really depends a lot on your position. If you're working with a lot of Excel, macros, and really you are working with other fellow engineers that only use Excel, well, using Python or maybe MATLAB will not be the best case scenario for you guys. And the same is true in reverse. Maybe you are working a lot with MATLAB and it wouldn't make that much of a sense to try to focus your attention towards using Python applications or, or maybe C++ applications or so. That being said, guys, there's no single programming language that will be one size fit all your needs. But anyways, now let's go to the list. And yes, Python is, of course, one of the most important programming languages overall in the world. Python is a general purpose programming language, which is, of course, widely used in scientific community for computing applications, data analysis, machine learning. But not only that, you could also find applications in chemical engineering, mostly in databases. Maybe if you want to program certain type of applications or to run specific design operations for your needs. It has the advantage that it is for free. You can find a lot of libraries, a lot of courses for free or even paid. And not only that, it has also add-ons or sub-applications that you may be using in order to improve your performance when doing certain type of projects. One great example will be using Jupyter, which will create a nice looking notebook that documents and exposes how calculations were done. Now, as stated, it has a lot of applications and probably you're wondering what is the catch? What is the main disadvantage of Python? These are slow in speed, not quite memory efficient, very weak in mobile or browser experiences, runtime errors, and of course, certain problems with database access. Nonetheless, Python remains a great tool for the young and advanced chemical engineer. Now, the second tool I want to present you guys is MATLAB. And I'm pretty sure that you already work with this tool because it's very common to be using this type of software in mathematical applications. So either in 3D plotting, maybe in probability or in statistics, maybe in numerical methods, or maybe even in other chemical engineering applications. So I'm pretty sure that you are quite familiar. MATLAB is a high level programming language commonly used in numerical computing simulations and data analysis. One of the greatest advantages is that yes, it is extensively used. So there's a very large community. You can find a lot of content, a lot of tutorials, a lot of courses out there. As you can imagine, this is great for equations, for matrices, for calculations overall, and it's quite efficient while running simulations. Now, of course, this is not properly a programming language in the sense that you cannot bring uh, your knowledge on MATLAB into other type of tools but it is technically speaking a unique programming language for MATLAB applications. 
Now let's talk about on the weaker parts or disadvantages of MATLAB. And the very first one will be that it is quite expensive and it's not for free. This means that your experience or the applications will be dependent on the type of versions that your company or yourself have bought already. Not only that, as stated before, it's a very unique uh, mathematical oriented programming language. So it may not be quite helpful to jump from MATLAB to other type of programming languages as compared with Python, which I will say that it's quite easier to go from Python to MATLAB rather than the reverse. And finally, to be honest, it really crashes a lot. Although I stated before it may be quite efficient, this is as long as your computer may run it. It may encounter a lot of problems while it's running out of memory or so, hence it's strongly dependent on your computer. Nonetheless, MATLAB still remains one of the most important tools out there for the chemical and process engineer. Number three will be the almighty Excel, and I'm not talking about Excel per se or macros per se, specifically visual basic applications. Now, before we even continue, let's get technical on what is actually VBA. It's a powerful macro programming language, so please don't confuse macros with visual basic applications. That is currently integrated with Microsoft Office applications. Mostly you will be associating this with Excel. Now, this is for sure a great advantage. Why? Because most companies have already all the Microsoft Office applications. You may have Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Access, and other type of applications that work greatly with macros, or properly speaking, Visual Basic applications. As you may or not know, the chemical industry is still strongly dependent on a lot of spreadsheet use. A lot of chemical engineers will actually be designing or checking out routines or checking out properties, plotting all these via spreadsheets. It's one of the easiest and less complicated ways to do engineering stuff. Now, typically with a lot of data will come a lot of boring analysis and of course a lot of tedious tasks. Here's where Visual Basic Applications comes very handy because you have the application within the spreadsheet itself. So it will be pretty easy how to interact between the macros, the Visual Basic Application and the data in the spreadsheet. And for sure, there's a lot of things that engineers do with Excel, spreadsheets, macros and of course Visual Basic Applications. But there are certain type of disadvantages that as you can imagine, there's a lot of things that you may lose while using this. So let's talk about them. First things first, PBA will depend strongly on which type of approach you are using. So if you are in piping, you will see certain type of applications. If you are in design, you will see other type of applications. If you're using uh, process engineering routine analysis, you will have other approaches. So as you can see, it may be very hard to standardize these type of applications. So every set is unique for certain department, for certain group of engineers, or maybe even worse for certain type of engineer that will only be able to understand their unique VBA application. On the other hand, pretty similar to MATLAB, this is a unique way of coding, but I wouldn't say that this is actually a 100% full programming language. It may be very natural to jump from VBA to other type of programming languages and you will not encounter that much of a problem. But if you get started with Python, I'm pretty sure that VBA will seem a little bit rustic, maybe simplified and very limited. Not only that, guys, we already know that Excel may not be the best tool for a lot of type of designs. Although we want to force it as an engineer, there are many other type of softwares that will simplify the way that you do calculations, design, maintenance, and operations of other type of equipment. Now, a small commentary here, guys, PBA is extensively used way much more than you can imagine. So if you're thinking on studying any programming languages, don't think that VBA is an old school programming language, not quite worth it. If you know that you are going to encounter those type of applications, don't hesitate to get started with the learning. And finally, before the conclusion, I just wanted to state some honorable mentions. C++ is for sure great for programming languages. Fortran, although it's a old programming language, is still very useful in certain type of engineering applications. SQL, if you're going to be working with a lot of databases. And finally, Java and JavaScript may be also considered. So there you have it, guys. These are the most used or the most important programming languages in chemical and process engineering. It will strongly depend on which type of applications you have, but for sure the important part is to get started with any one of them.
Select the one that resonates the most for you. If you don't want to spend that much money in MATLAB, then you have either Python or VBA. Or if you don't like those black screens, you think that it may be very hard to get started with Python, simply shift towards VBA. Whatever you select, the important thing is that you are getting the very first step towards the right direction. Remember that programming is getting each time much more important in any field of engineering, especially nowadays with artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data. If you have any commentary, if you have any idea, or if you are an experienced chemical engineer that want to share a little bit on programming languages or their applications, please let us know in the comment section so other fellow chemical engineers may know what are the actual real applications of programming languages in chemical and process engineering. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.